So first, I would like to introduce you to uh, the state of the art in mycotoxin determination by also addressing official analytical methods. <clears throat> and uh, when we have a look at uh, those uh, methods which have been established so far, we have uh, in the first instance to, um, to mention the so-called routine methods uh, which cover uh, TLC, so thin layer chromatography, LC UV, so liquid chromatography, <clears throat> coupled to UV, spec uh, to, to UV spectrophotometry, uh, then LC uh, mass, mass spectrometry, also GC gas chromatography. <clears throat> and out of these routine methods, kind of, kind of as the fundamental basis, so called reference methods uh, have uh, uh, been developed. <coughs> Excuse me and have uh, been approved uh, by AOAC uh, or SEN, what this is uh, will uh, be dwelling on later. Uh, and uh, as a result of the need uh, for rapid methods, ideally for on-site screening, so ideally the ideal device would be so that I have something like a mini roboter. I go uh, in a production plant, I go on the field uh, and do directly analysis uh, of the grain, of the corn cob, like Star Trek, so I have like, something like a laser pistol, and uh, on the laser pistol it then displays, okay, there is uh, three microgram per kilogram aflatoxin in the cob. That is where we want to go. Uh, that's the direction, but we are not there yet. Uh, we still have uh, to deal with ELISA-based techniques based on antibody and the gene reactions, <coughs> uh, also integrated in dipsticks technology. And uh, uh, talking about Star Trek uh, technologies, there are so-called emerging methods <coughs> uh, using, for instance, molecular imprinted polymers, so-called MIPS as innovative uh, separation <coughs> uh, cleanup techniques, fluorescence polarization, infrared, uh, also biochip technology. So there's actually <coughs> a great variety of uh, techniques which uh, uh, have uh, been developed and um, many of those are still under development. <coughs> Talking about the official analytical methods, uh, there are actually SEN and uh, AOSC established methods. Uh, SEN uh, being uh, the uh, European Committee for Standardization, uh, they uh, have uh, a working group, number five, biotoxins. Uh, I used to work for SEN myself. Now, uh, Michael Suljok, uh, the uh, head of our multitoxin group, uh, he is now with uh, SEN. And uh, the um, American pendant, so to speak, um, the uh, association of official analytical chemists, uh, they establish uh, performance criteria for mycotoxin methods. <coughs> SEN in Europe, AOC in, in the US. And these performance criteria, for instance, what is the recovery, uh, um, what is the LOD which is required, the LOQ, the limit of quantification for a certain mycotoxin, so that is all um, as laid down by these official bodies. And this is certainly based on uh, collaborative studies where these uh, laboratories who part that participate in these collaborative studies um, report their results, and based on the reported results, AOC and SEN uh, are able to establish so-called expert opinions and to come up with these performance criteria. <coughs> the performance criteria fulfill actually uh, the, uh, those uh, uh, laid down by the EU regulations for sampling and analysis <coughs> in this regulation 2006. So certainly this minimum, minimum criteria have to be fulfilled. And in the meanwhile, we've got the 10 SEN and 45 AOC approved methods, which are official reference methods for uh, mycotoxin analysis. However, it has to be pointed out, this is a long, tedious process to establish such a, such a method. Uh, there is also not such a great pressure uh, compared to, let's say, um, glucose coarse fluoro level in blood, because everybody needs this, there's actually um, not uh, such a great demand uh, compared uh, to the medical field. Nonetheless, <coughs> in uh, a joint effort of different European labs, uh, we have now 10 methods available. <coughs> There's more uh, AOEC methods. However, um, it has to be pointed out that these methods uh, by AOEC 
um, are actually simply there. Uh, the, the greater number is based on actually the history of AOC, which uh, is an um, um, institution which uh, has uh, been established uh, a couple of decades ago. <coughs> and um, there, among these 45 AOC methods, there are many uh, methods which are only based on thin layer chromatography. So you don't expect two sophisticated methods there. <coughs> I also have to point out that uh, these official methods are not mandatory. So uh, if you are an official control lab, you don't necessarily have to establish uh, these official methods. Uh, I don't know if you work for, for Health Sciences Authority in Singapore, um, maybe um, the management wants to have uh, such an official method in place uh, to be ready uh, for so-called uh, official control surveillance and in, uh, uh, for, for, uh, to be prepared for cases of dispute that one lab in Singapore um, by repeated uh, analysis they find a level of 5 microgram per kilogram aflatoxin B1 in baby food whereas the European lab analyzing the same commodity, the same sample, finds 15 microgram per kilogram and then there is a case of this dispute, it maybe end up at court and at court they say, well, <coughs> isn't there any official method? And then they say, well, yeah, yes or no, well, let's say, um, let's assume that there is an official method there for, for that, the for aflatoxin B1, for sure, yes. <coughs> then uh, an, uh, an official control lab will be asked to perform the analysis also with official reference methodology and <coughs> this will then be used to solve this dispute. However, using a ZEN or an AOC method does not automatically mean that your lab is accurately uh, determining mycotoxins at a high level of trueness because that shall not be mixed up with validation. You can use an AOC approved method. It's a clear descript, described method uh, with a, a couple of analytical steps but even if you establish that, uh, that method in your lab, it's not automatically in-house validated. Neither is it collaboratively validated. Um, the method as such, yes, but you as uh, an individual laboratory will, is still lacking the final proof that, you are lab that, 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 that your measurements are actually uh, comparable um, and uh, provide you with uh, a high level of trueness and uh, precision summarized, uh, so to speak, as accuracy. So that is actually something kind of in, in, in England they say pulling, pulling the wool over, over one's eyes. Uh, they're saying, well, we have got an AOC method. Okay, okay, there, if you have got an AOC approved method, then it's okay. It's okay in the first instance if you have a validated method, and only in the second instance, if it's additionally also AC approved. So that's that's important message, but we can discuss that later.